From Tally to Cali, it's time to wake up. Wake up, wake up. Warchant.com is your ultimate seminal sports source. And this is Wake Up Warchant, presented by Zaxby's. Now here's Warchant.com's Aslan Hunjavandi and Corey Clark. Wake up. What up, everybody? It's Wake Up Warchant, presented by Zaxby's. I'm Aslan. Corey's here as well. We are Wake Up Warchant, part of the Warchant.com family. Use the promo code Warchant30. If you're not already a member of the Ultimate Semel Sports Source, students at FSU, email us from your student email address to support at Warchant.com. Promo code will come your way. 12 months of access for $12. Corey Clark, how you doing, friend? I'm good, buddy. How are you doing? Did you have a good weekend? I had a pretty darn pretty darn good weekend, man. I, I got too unplugged, I think, from the world. I did not get on the Twitter machine, really. I did not check War Chant. There's a lot of good things on the website, which we will talk about. But it rained too much back home. But overall, it was a good week. And apparently, the army of Wake Up War Chant and Zaxby's grows stronger. Did you see this? Shout out to uh, Bart Ross. He tweeted at us that... Um, even the elite guys know know what time it is, Corey, as the kids would say. Jeff Sims, elite 11 quarterback, committed verbally to Florida State, tweeted over the weekend, a no place better than Zaxby's. Uh, a circle with a slash through it, baseball cap, and then the 100 emoji. Bart tweeted at us saying, seems like he's already one of us. Accurate. It does appear that way. I mean, way, that's Bart. a way to get uh, that's a way to get on our good side for sure. If yeah. we're going to tweet about Zaxby's, I, Horns, Horny Brook, um, come on, Alex. If he tweeted about Zaxby's, he'd be on my good side too. And he made the uh, he made our top forty countdown <laughs> that I'm sure we'll talk about for a uh, for a few minutes anyway on this show. Yeah, we'll talk about it. You know, also what I was able to find out, uh, I went. I wanted to because th- I remember we did it last year. I was the top forty. I'm not involved in the top forty, so that it gives it that much more credibility because I'm not involved in it. Uh, Correct. I haven't seen the full list, but I, I did wonder when we were doing it last year, you start naming all these guys. Like I wonder what 2013 looked like. So I was able to go back and find the War Chant Top 40 from 2013, but it's missing 40 to th- or yeah, 40 to 36 is missing. But everything else is there. It's so. also missing uh, Corey and Ira. Right. Right. Yes. Yes. It's that's which is probably an even more important thing. But yeah. What's the uh, what's the top? Can I give you my top five before you even tell me? I'm going to give you my top five. Um, you know, with six years of hindsight. Okay. Well, right, wait, so wait, no. Are you going to do it? Wait, are you doing it retrospectively, or, or are you going to be honest and objective and say what you would have done in July of 2013? Oh no, I'm going back and saying what it was, and then oh. we'll see how accurate the the list was. Before uh, you yeah, do I mean, that, I, I, yeah, before I mean, you do James that, this would have been my number one too. Really. Really? Um, and then I would have had I think I would have had Jernigan too. Okay. Do you want me to do you want me I to say who the Rashad. numbers are or do you want to just go through your whole top five and then I tell you what the top five is? Yeah, no, we'll just do my, my top five. Okay. So I think I'm gonna go Jameis one. one. All right. Jernigan two. Okay. I'm going to go you know looking back on it, okay, so Kelvin three. All right. Kelvin or Telvin? Kelvin, not not okay. Telvin, Kelvin. Okay. But I feel like Rashad was probably ranked higher on that list because Kelvin hadn't really done a whole lot yet. Um, so Kelvin three, then ye Cam Irving four. That's a tough one. There's a few. There's a there were a few Ooh. good players on that team to choose from. A couple. Lamarcus five. Okay. Okay. Uh, before I unveil the top five, should we get James Blackman on some sort of Zaxby's diet? Like well, I was gonna say we could ask him that in Charlotte, but he won't be up there in Charlotte. But we can have uh, Terry. We can have Tamarian tell James if he wants. We can maybe help him put on some weight, some different skinny, and he can you know get on the Zaxby diet. Jeff Sims put fifteen pounds on. He said PB and J, but I think it was mainly Zaxby's. Back to the top right, five. But again, you don't. You you can also get salads at Zaxby's where it's not gonna fatten you up. Right. That's the beauty of Zaxby's. Oh, actually, check it out. So this top five has the entire top 40 listed at the bottom. But anywho, back to your top five. You want me? I'll start at five and work my way to the top. Okay. Number five. Now, this is according to D.C. Reeves, who was the managing editor at the time 
uh, Gene Williams, still the publisher, still OG, as well as ESPN Radio's Jeff Cameron, who you can hear weekdays, 3 to 6 p.m. on 97.9 ESPN Radio. And for the people that don't know, these are usually done right around this time. Correct. July I'll see what before the, uh, the season starts. Uh, this was this one was published, 2013's was published on July 1st. Okay. Was the, uh, All right. The there you go. On. Number five, Jameis Winston. <laughs> oh, Okay. Which is crazy. I almost want to have a whole episode about that. I was just never b- under the belief that a freshman was ever going to start for Jimbo's uh, high tech offense. Yeah, but we knew in July that really? he was going. That's why he's number five. Okay. Because he's the starting quarterback. Otherwise, I mean, we'd seen him in the spring game. Yeah, his depth depth chart projection says number one quarterback. I thought. I thought. Jim, uh, I thought Jimbo took that down to the wire. I thought it was pretty much like on the tarmac I mean, yeah, before I, Pittsburgh. I don't think he announced until like eight or nine days before the opener, but, yeah, I mean, come on. Okay, Jameis five. And by the way, Cameron had him at five. D.C. Reeves had him at eight. Gene had him at three. Number four was Telvin. Gene had him at number four. Cameron had him at six. Number three, Timmy Jernigan. Gene okay. had him six. Cameron had him fourth. Number two, Rashad Green. Jeff had him number two. Gene had him number five. And then number one was LaMarcus Joyner. Uh, He was consensus number one. LaMarcus Joyner sits atop our top 40 this season as our consensus choice. On the field, he's the best pure football player FSU has. He's quick, tough, and has great instincts and seeks out contact, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah, and, and I don't know what the edict was when they did it back then. Like, obviously, I do it a little different. Like, I do it – like, last year, I think I had, like, Jawan Williams 11th or 12th. Not because I thought he was the 11th best player on the team, but I thought he was really, really important. And I kind of do – it. we do it as a mix of, like, importance and ability. Um, so it's not necessarily the most talented players on the team. It's the people whose play will dictate the most how the season goes. Right. So, like, Jawan Williams last year, if he'd have been awesome, well, that would have made a big difference. Correct. But it turns out he wasn't. Yeah. Anyway, I would have thought, I mean, I would always, I always now kind of go quarterback number one. Right. Um, just because it is, if you have a bad quarterback, it's, it's, uh, but again, I also want to say that in July of 2013, even though we all thought Jameis went, we'd all seen the spring game and we'd heard all the stories and it, so, it started to sound like myths. There's no way to know he was going to be that. So, Absolutely, yeah. I, I, you know, I get it. I get it. Uh, I, you know, I had I had Lamarcus in my top five. Sure, I feel like I would have had. Uh, I feel like I might have put Jameis number one, but who knows? It's hindsight, right? Six years of hindsight. Yeah, yeah. All right. That said, there's one out for this class for this year. Uh, we broke it up a little bit differently. It looks like we've done them in. Where groups can of you 10. look and see where Jalen Ramsey was on that list? Uh, he's not on the list at all in the top forty. Why would he be? I mean, you had Tyler Hunter. Uh, yeah. You had Ronald Darby. You had Terrence Brooks. You had P.J. Williams. Uh, LaMarcus Joyner. Yeah. I mean, yeah, uh, no, and that's the thing Nick Waysom Nick a... isn't even on this list. Nick Waysom wasn't what? even on the top 40 in 2013 preseason. I mean, Greg Dent was on. Actually, I take it back. Waysom was. He was number 14 right behind yeah. Greg Dent. Isn't that funny? And he did, Yeah, that's right. And Waysom didn't even play. Yeah. And, um. I, we did a preseason magazine for the for the Democrat. We do a preseason magazine. And I'm, I remember vividly writing like a the secondary preview of how good they were going to be. Mm-hmm. And if I mentioned Jalen Ramsey at all, it was like a line like, oh, yeah. And, and five star freshman Jalen Ramsey could add some depth yeah. or something like that. We had no idea in July. None. We just did. I mean, you hear all these stories and we're used to five star kids coming to Florida State and some of them pan out. Some of them don't. Most don't play right away, and they certainly don't start their first game. So, again, it's easy in hindsight, but that's how loaded that team was, is that somebody like Jalen Ramsey isn't even mentioned in the top 40. And I don't think people would have looked at that and gone, well, well, that's a huge omission. At the time, I mean. Now, obviously, it looks like one. But back then, that made all the sense in the world because that team was stacked in the secondary. And Tyler Hunter, I think, had led him in interceptions the year before. Mm-hmm. Anyway. Speaking of Tyler Hunter, how about another Tyler Logan Tyler, he starts it off this year in the 2019 War Chant Top 40, the original War Chant Top 40. Mm -hmm. Uh, The senior punter comes in at number 40. Uh, Ricky Aguayo's at 39. Uh, A.J. Litton tied it for 37th along with Dennis Briggs. You know, and when I saw this list, I don't want to go through it list number by number, 
uh, subscribers can check that out, warchant.com. You already know the deal. But my thing was, man, I, I don't have high expectations for Dennis Briggs. Even as a redshirt freshman, I know there's a lot of opportunity ahead for him. But me being the skeptical guy I am, I'm like, if, if that guy who quite literally has done nothing, and again, this is, this is a projection, so this isn't based on what they are or who they are. It's based on what they can be in 2019. Like, if he's 37th, and like, golly, what does that mean? Like, how, you know, what's going to happen this year if he's the 37th most reliable player? Well, number 37 for the 2013 class or the 2013 season was Chris Kasher. So, you know, it all worked out fine. It was a defensive end that we were hoping was going to uh, produce, and he didn't. But everything worked out quite fine. So there's no sort of correlation, I don't think. I, I do wonder that there has to be a certain point on this list, I think, where you want to be able to hit really close to their value, right? Like you want to – like 25 and up, you need to kind of be close on hitting that. I think anything else below that, it really won't matter. If, if, you're, if you're 29th most reliable or most highly projected guy doesn't quite pan out and play up to that level, you're, you're all right, you know? But like to your point, if, if you've got the left tackle, projected left tackle being the 11th guy – uh, the the 11th highest projected guy in terms of his impact, and he doesn't play up to that sort of billing, then that's when you start really getting into colossally uh, underachieving seasons. Yeah, and also, you know, in the in the honest of, in the honor of transparency, in the, in, um, it's hard to like differentiate between number 31 and number 29 when you're ranking things, and also because the positions are so different. Like, you know, Logan Tyler, Logan Tyler was, you know, a good player for them last year, all things considered. Was he, though? Um, like, I saw I saw the stat you put in here. So he I mean, punted, led the ACC in punting average. But he, I guess, I mean, but I, I, I saw. I mean, he led the world in punting yards. Right. Because he punted all the time. Two full but miles. But he also led in punting average. He had like 21 50-yard punts. Yeah, you get, see, the punter, man, if you're a good punter, nobody cares. Unless, th- unless it's a, a bowl game and you're pinning them at the one. Uh, like uh, yeah, 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 Gano. Like Gano or Powell, Gano. maybe both of them. I think Gano, Gano did, against Wisconsin. Um, yeah. Against Wisconsin. Yeah. yeah, when you're pinning teams at the one the whole game, then people notice uh, in a close game. Otherwise, when you're going five and seven, if you have a good season as a punter, you know, nobody cares. And quite honestly, Florida State has so many holes that having a great punter, like he's not going to be the 11th most important player, obviously. But – uh yeah, it's just it's 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 a way it's it's a gauge of where we're kind of where we are, obviously, but where the fans are going into the season. There will be some surprises. I don't know where Terry was on that list last year. I don't know where uh, Cam Akers was or where Francois was. Any of that? Pretty stuff. sure you know, Akers last year was, was number one because we didn't know who the starter was going to be. But you know these things, these lists can be you know again. Warchant was the first one to do it. Now everyone does it. Um, but you know they can be they can be uh, you know taken for what they what they are. It's just a, a a way in July number one to talk about football and to kind of get people, you know, start to get dialed back up for it again. Like hey, we're here, we're getting close, we're in July now, we're a month away from practice. So here's a reminder of everybody that's on the team. Here's a reminder of some guys that we think might take that next step, like a like a, a Briggs. I mean, if he if maybe he has seven sacks this year, that'd be a big deal. You know who knows, um, but he could be important. He could get some playing time, especially because they're they don't have a lot of depth at that position. Um, so we'll see. You know, somebody like a Robert Cooper, um, who I by the way I, I looked at his stats. He only had ten tackles last year. I thought he played pretty darn well. Yeah. I mean, I, I mean, I know his position doesn't put up stats anyway. It's more of a space create, you know, taking up space. But he was a. I thought he was a pretty darn impressive player for a freshman. But when you look at his stats, you're like, he didn't do anything. But again, that's not the position, I guess, that racks up stats. Right. Also, last year was Cam was the number one guy on the top ten. Yeah. Well, I mean, you know, there wasn't a, I guess a a, a ton to choose from anyway. I mean, where was Burns? Uh, you're making me pull that up. Let's see here. Well, I'm also trying to look up Logan Tyler. I mean, because I don't remember Logan Tyler flipping the field last year, really. I mean, he never flipped the field because he was always kicking from his 13. Yeah, but can't you get but, a nice You know, they'd have to start at the 46. Can't you get a little 42. I was trying to find his net punting 
because that's where the real truth lies. But I couldn't. Well, find it in yeah, there. no, no, he do, he did hit some bombs right at people. Burns was um, number two. You had him number two. Okay, so all you right. all had Cam. Like a... You all had Cam number one. Burns was two. I mean, it just shows you right here. You talk about not living up to expectations. Number three was Demarcus Christmas. Number four is DeAndre Francois. Number five was James Blackman. You know, one of those guys. Yeah, only, and that was the problem yeah. is that we didn't know who's. I really thought there'd be more sharing of the position at quarterback, but it was hard to put one above the other because we really didn't know who was going to be the starter. So you didn't want to have like Francois at four and Blackman at thirty-one when it ends up Blackman wins. You know, wins the job. So I think I had Blackman really high too. I think I might have had him back to back in my list. You had Francois at four. You had Blackman at five. There you go. Boom. There it is. I, rem- I remember things. I remember things, people. All right. So we did this in installments of 10. We'll actually be doing some video features on this where there'll be dialogue amongst Ira, Gene, Jeff, maybe even Corey, although Corey's, Corey's contract is limits his on-camera at bat so Ira can get more shine. We got to... We gotta, we sure. gotta showcase the managing editor a little bit better. Thirty, I liked like Emmett Rice. I think that's actually a little bit low. I guess that might be you got him at twenty-two. That's why you and I get along fairly well. I think that I think yeah, but he's a wild card, right? Like he's a guy, and I and I write this about a bunch of them. He's a guy that at the end of the year could be like number nine, right? Like I would be surprised, obviously, because we just haven't seen it from him, and he has a hard. He can't. He hasn't been able to stay on the field. But that's a guy who's rangy and can move, and in a three-four, and in a pass-happy uh, era that we're in, with with having to cover running backs and slot receivers, he seems like he could be a really valuable guy. He might be a guy that, uh, if we did a postseason top forty, could be twenty spots higher. Yeah. But he's a wild card, and so many of the guys at the bottom, like the bottom twenty, the bottom eighteen or so, um, are really wild card guys where you're hoping to see them take a next step. The top 10 are all proven guys, obviously, mostly. Well, obviously, they all are proven. But it's those those back 15 where you're like, you're waiting for them to take that next step to have that, you know, DeMarcus Walker from sophomore to junior jump and to be really, really an uh, important part of the team. Man, I don't want to spoil this. Anthony Grant at 31, I feel like that's kind of high unless LeBourne is on. I feel like I, I hope LeBourne hasn't been totally overlooked. Come not, on, man. Who are you talking to? Of course right. not. But, uh, you know, he's on there. But also, you know, you, I do think that Bryles is going to use more than two guys. And it's running back. So you just got to figure that uh, um, that that a third guy is going to get some get some carries. You know, I think LeBorn would have gotten a lot of carries last year if he had been healthy. Um, and he was going to be the third guy. And, that, and to that point, somebody like Hornybrook, who I can't what, – what did we have him at, like 30, 31? No, he's in the top 30. He's ahead of Emmett Rice, which I'm, I'm yeah, sorry okay. to keep jumping around, but like Emmett Rice, he's he could easily be the best linebacker. It's crazy that he's that low at 30. He could well, easily be the could, best linebacker. Could he? When have we seen that? We've heard it from Jimbo, who's a really good talent evaluator. Well, I mean, we, saw, we heard when the he was one a game freshman he, that he reminded him of Telvin, but we haven't seen that yet. So it's hard to say, well, the oh, one this game, guy's better than Dontavious. This guy's going to be better than, um, you know, Nazaldine. Uh, you know, it, just because he hasn't been out there. But I, think seen a, a I think he's an intriguing dude, a really intriguing dude. But is he healthy? Is he ever going to be healthy? Well, I mean, let's not act like he's Landon Dickerson. I mean, he had like an ankle problem most of last year. He gutted it out for the Boston College game and actually played quite well in the Boston College game. And then he missed spring with, uh, I think, either – I don't want to say either. It's one of his arms was, was clubbed yeah. and bandaged up. So, uh, I mean, I think – And that was a big – to me, that was a big spring. Yeah, it would have been. It would have been. But if he's fine, and I, I think that's, and I think they were extra cautious with him because I think they do obviously realize his value. But like the counterpoint is, we have seen plenty of film from Don Tavius, and I just don't know like how. I mean, he, he could make a big jump. I mean, I guess it's not outside the realm of reason that he could make a big jump. But right now, when optimism is flowing high, I'm I'm more likely to kind of overvalue probably Emmett Rice because of his potential. And undervalue, I guess, Don Tavis just because we've seen well, he's I don't the know, thirty plus games it's unknown, out of him. Yeah, it's unknown versus known. Right, but I, I would say this: I wouldn't. Uh, Don Tavis had a Don Tavis is a nice player, man. He's not 
No, he's he not is. terrible. By no, he's not. No, he's good. He is a good player. He's a good he player. Yeah. Uh, he's certainly their most proven linebacker, and you got to figure he'll be better uh, uh, this year. But, yeah, it's the same thing with, like, uh, with the Hornybrook. And I mentioned what I write is, you know, there have only been two times this decade where even if he doesn't win the job, and obviously we talked about him after you got back from Louisiana, that, you know, he's certainly not coming here to be a backup. But even if he doesn't win the job, which I don't think he will, you know, what are the odds he doesn't play at all? Like, there's been two years – in this last decade, in the last decade, Florida State's had two seasons out of ten where um, where the backup quarterback, quarterback didn't start at least one game. And they had one season where he started every game. So, or every game but the Alabama game. So there's a, there's a very good chance that even if Hornibrook doesn't get the job immediately, he is going to be counted on for significant snaps at some point this season. And so, you know, a backup quarterback is an important position. And he might be, and he might end up winning the job. I mean, I don't think that's going to happen, but he might. But still, it's really important, uh, especially with a guy like, you know, a guy that you know. I I, I shouldn't say it because Blackman already played a full season and got through yeah. it. Yeah, yeah, he did. Um, but you know, is it the biggest dude in the world? And certainly doesn't have the best offensive line in front of him. So it's good to have it's good to have depth at the quarterback position too. He's 29th on the list, Alex Hornibrook. Gene has him 34th, Ira 30th, you 23rd. Cameron doesn't even have him ranked. So right, there is which that. I get that too. I mean, I think part of the thinking is, man, if you know, if he's not going to play a snap, I'm not going to put him in my top 40. But then again, like I just said, odds are he's going to play a snap and probably play some really meaningful ones. Yeah. What does stand out to me is the the true freshmen that are on this list. You know, Travis J. Checks in at 32, and then Akeem Dent is here at 25. And don't I, you think I, also I, that's a like good Dent, sign? I don't, mean, don't you think Dent is a guy that could uh, absolutely. absolutely could be much higher when it's all said and done? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, he's an exciting prospect, man. That guy again, I just couldn't have been more impressed with him. Uh, the the few times we got to see him in the spring, that dude is is uh, he's just a football player, man. He he's got it. I, you know, I think you did a really good job representing the family here on Wake Up War Champ presented by Zaxby's Corey. Like, I see Jaleel Thanks, McCray's buddy. at 27. You had him at 40. which And I I, I mean, Cameron's got him at 17. Like, yeah. dang. That's that's really high. But Akeem, you know, Ira, I see Ira's got him at 16. I mean, that's the kind of stuff that jumps out at me is when I see these discrepancies in terms of where these guys are ranked and where certain people have them. But, yeah, I mean – True freshman being on the top 40 is probably a rare thing. We talk, obviously talked about at the top of the show with Jalen not being on it, but it's a different day and age, even though that wasn't that long of a day and age ago. But, but these guys, you can expect them to come in day one, even in something as loaded as that back, that defensive backfield, which is crazy to think about all the, the five stars that are already on campus, right? You know, like Stanford Samuels, Levante yeah. Taylor, uh, that these guys can come in and, and potentially – uh, be able to make an impact, but it's hard to, to, to argue against those guys. I, I do think Akeem Dent and, and Travis Jay are, are definitely going to be two guys that'll uh, make an impact. And who knows, man, if Travis Jay, what if he, what if Travis Jay comes in and does a, you know, uh, runs Wildcat in Charlottesville, uh, a la, you know, Danny Cannell handing off the work done, but this time we get the extra yard and it's a touchdown. The game's over. Boom. We win, you know, could change the whole perspective. Whole projection could happen, my man. Whole projection could happen. Uh, but yeah, so the uh, the top forty will continue on uh, on Warchant dot com. Nothing else really here. Stand, it, it seems too crazy to me. I mean, Brady Scott's twenty second. Uh, Robert Cooper twenty three. I think Cooper could be a little bit higher, but you guys are all well. No, you and I are have him in the twenties. Gene's got him at sixteen. Cameron's got him at eighteen. That probably would would probably rank him a little bit higher. I would think. But, well, what are you going to do? Yeah, we'll not, see. Yeah, I could just, I could, I could ask for it next time around. So, but you feel pretty good so far through it. Like you, you, you like the way it's it's shaping out. You've 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 had to do all the research and write all the blurbs on these guys. Has anything surprised you in, in going back and looking back at eighteen and and putting these guys where they're at on these lists? Uh, no, and you know, obviously, I I owed the I owed the site some work. Ira's been uh, carrying the mantle. Uh, for seemingly a few weeks now, so I was like, you know what, I'll I'll write these things. I, you know, I love doing these top forty things, Aslan. It's my thing. So, um, no, nothing really. Um, you know, I th I, I thought I remember, you know, Trayshawn Harrison doing more, but he didn't. I think he had like 
10 catches for 66 yards. But again, you saw a little, I don't know, there's probably like two plays that I remember all season from him. And I don't even remember the plays or who they were against, but I remember being like, oh, wow, he's got a change. That, that was impressive. Wake Forest. That wasn't normal. Yeah, Wake Forest, and, yeah, so that you, one catch. You, you see those kind of things, and that's kind of the, the stuff like that. And um, it already mentioned Robert Cooper. Like, Robert Cooper, to me, flashed a lot. And I guess, you know, when you're – he can get into a backfield and still – he might not make the play or the tackle. Somebody else will come and clean it up. But he still won the play. And I, and I just remember him winning a lot of plays in the interior of the line. And he's a massive human being. I think I think he's listed at 360. Who knows what how accurate that is and if he's higher or lower than that. But he is a big, big dude, and he's hard to block. He proved to be hard to block as a freshman. He should be harder to block um, as a sophomore moving forward. So you, things like that. Um, also, you know, I, I, you know, just, yeah, when you look up somebody like an Emmett Rice and you're like, man, he is, he just hasn't really made an impact at all. Just not at all yet. Um, and yeah, I do. I do. I remember the way Jimbo talked about him. Um, so you're waiting for that too. You just want to see that unleashed and you hope it's not, and I don't, I shouldn't say this because Matthew Thomas had some nice moments, um, at Florida state, but it always seemed like he could never put a full year together for this reason or that reason. And you're always just waiting. And now it's time, you know, Emmett, this is Emmett's year, man. He's got to do it now. So you hope this is the kind of year where he can take a jump. I, you know, most Florida State fans, you know, I know the people that listen to this show or maybe the people that are, certainly the people that are on the website know who he is. But no, my, uh, not a lot of casual Florida State fans probably know the name Emmett Rice. And, you know, now's the time, now's the year where he's going to have to make himself a known commodity or it just, or it just won't happen. So, you know, hopefully it happens for him because I do think he has some, some talent and some ability. Well said. Yeah, Thanks, man. buddy. All right, man. That's about all we got for you today, folks. What'd you do for July 4th? Did you go see fireworks? Yeah. Went to the beach and then within an like hour. fireworks? What's that? Do you like fireworks? Yeah. Yeah, I do. I mean, right. I grew up around it. You know, we used to have really big parties at my friend's house. He's called Mortars and Mayhem, where we would light off like really high grade fireworks. Like it, it became a. It became a spectacle in the in the neighborhood. People would bring their kids out to watch us just drunken hooligans fire these things off. But yeah, I'm a big firework guy. I'm not one of those people that gets mad when when folks post photos all over social media about fireworks. Live it up. I think it's a beautiful thing. Uh, I don't like the traffic of going to the beach and and dealing with it leaving. But we didn't. I mean, for the fourth this year, I went out to the beach during the day. Then the clouds rolled in, so it wasn't even that good. And then went out to. Uh, my buddy's friend's house, uh, or my buddy's family's house, they built a house pretty much on the bayou in Tampa Bay. So we got to watch the fireworks from, like, Safety Harbor, a neighboring town, and, nice. and a little bit from Tampa. So worked out really well. It's nice and laid back. Also, we need another sponsor, and I, I don't want to I, – I feel like I'm cheating on Michelob Ultra, and I don't want to be that guy. And you all don't like me, and I'm going to say this, and I don't care. And you can like me even less. Those hard seltzer waters, Corey, like, you know, Ira had that cookout a few weeks ago and your buddies were passing through and his, your buddy and his family were passing through Tallahassee and they, they were uh, earlier in the day they were at the beach and they were they were even drinking them at Ira's cookout. I'm like, yeah, I should have one of these. I'm like, that's nah, fine. I'm sure I'll try it some other time. It's it's a game changer. If you're day drinking <laughs> under the sun, it's literally water practically. It's just it's seltzer water with a little bit of taste and it's practically double the alcohol level of a beer okay fantastic delicious right. low calories low carbs it's like healthy quasi healthy so I, I i took a bunch of those down on the fourth and i didn't even really pay for it that much on the fifth i didn't feel that bad and obviously people um you, you want to do this in moderation of course unless you're unless you have a house on the beach and yes. then hey man Get after it. Nobody, as long as you can stumble back to your house and you don't have to get in a car, whatever, you, that's fine. Do what you got to do. Um, what's funny though, not in, in apropos of nothing, but we had a at my at my sister's house on Friday. We had a a, a late bur a belated birthday party for Brady. Okay. And so I was already there, and then his mom drove up, and as soon as they get out, literally, I'm in the driveway. Uh, I was going actually to get something out of my car, and I see them pull up. And he hops out of the car before the car's even in part oh, because no. it's Brady. 
and he goes, uh, I'm not going fishing. <laughs> and I go, what? <laughs> and he goes, you just told the guy on your show that you were going to take me fishing. I don't want to go fishing. And I'm like, well, and I'm, and then I'm like, oh yeah, that's right. The guy offered to take us fishing. The 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 nice gentleman that asked us a question yeah. on Renegade Marion Express. County. And I was like, yeah, I should do that. Um, and he's like, I don't want to go fishing. Brady. I go, you don't want to go fishing with him? He goes, no, no, I just don't want to go fishing. I don't have the patience for it. You know, I, you even said I don't have the patience for it. He goes, I'm going to jump in and start wrestling him. I'm like, all right, Brady, we won't. We maybe we'll hold off on taking you fishing for a while. Brady, come on, man, that was an awesome offer. Do it. I thought so too. Yeah. But I also thought it was cool that uh, his mom, my ex-wife, uh, the lovely Shanna, um, and, and him are still still listening to the show. Yeah. Why not? That's cool. Right? What else are you gonna do? It's July. Good you know? point. What has she got going on in her life? Do you guys. <laughs> I mean, you guys, I'm sure you. there's a podcast. Hey, well, out. well said, Aslan. I'm, well sure, said. <laughs> there's, I'm sure there's a good podcast out there that talks about hand placement and, um, you know, metrics and, and analytics. Right. Yeah, that's, that that's not too. us, though. Yeah, we're, we're not, not, we're not about that life. Hey, real quick, too, before we sign off, nice debut for our guys, uh, Fiondu Cabangeli mm-hmm. and Terrence Mann with the Clippers. I did want to mention that as well. Uh, shout out to them. I mean, they're, that sort of play has already propelled the Clippers to – uh, in some sports books now being the odds on favorite to win the NBA title this coming season. So it was odd. It was like last week. I don't think they were the odds on favorite at all. And then all of a sudden Fiondu has a 21 and 10 game, Whew. double, double Terrence Mann just fills it up. Nine, five, four, three, everything, you know, just like how a typical Terrence Mann game, mm-hmm. the bookmakers see that one game. It's even, it's not even a real game. It's a summer league game. They just see those two draft picks doing work in the summer league. All of a sudden, for for that probably that reason alone, the Clippers are now the favorites to win the NBA title. Yeah. So that's pretty awesome for those two guys. Like, do you think Kawhi now is having second thoughts about he's going to get enough touches? I mean, how is there's only one ball? Like, I really know? am interested. Like, I I do think, I mean, I think Fiondu will play for them a little bit. They don't have a lot of bigs. Terrence Mann, I I think Terrence Mann has a chance to have a nice career in the NBA. He needs a shot. Um, and I hope he makes the team. I hope he sticks. Either way, I think he'll go to the G League if he doesn't, and I think he'll go back and forth, and I think he has a real shot to learn. I mean, talk about learning your position from guys like that. Holy moly, that's just that's just a great learning experience. But I, don't, I, I really don't expect him to be a, a big-time member of the rotation this year. Beyond do, though, mm-hmm. again, I don't think he's going to be averaging 30 minutes a game. But he should get some playing time for them, I think. I really do. I think he's a big guy that can guard multiple positions, can knock down shots, and is really aggressive. You can use his fouls. They don't have a lot of big guys. Man, all of a sudden, those two guys are in a situation where how cool would it be to see one of the, one or both of those guys getting any minutes in an NBA Finals game? Crazy. Dude, and, that, and they should. Like The Clippers, if they stay healthy, uh, should at least you know be in the conversation. With 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 Kawhi and uh, and Paul George and Fiondu, what a trio! Hey, we we literally might have to send you to whatever Phillips Arena, whatever it's called now. When the when the Clippers do come to town, it almost might be worth having you go cover that game. Oh, I definitely would. If uh, especially if, if one of them's on, but if if both of them are on, certainly I would go and uh and just do a story on both those guys. That would be uh that'd be really neat. And I you know I have a a pretty good relationship with both those guys. Um. So, yeah, that would be really cool. And plus, Lou Williams, I, I, I'm sure I've yeah. mentioned this on the show, um, I was his very first interview when he was a freshman in high school at South Gwinnett High School at the paper I worked for up there. Um, he, was a, he was a freshman that averaged 30 points a game in the highest classification in Georgia, just an incredible, incredible score. He scored 50 in a game as a freshman, and he was that size, like he was 6'1". Um, I thought he was going to end up being like 6'6", but he stopped growing as a freshman. But he was still an incredible leaper and athlete and everything. But yeah, so I, I've I've known him since he was fourteen. So hey, you know I can, uh, um, you know I can uh, I can I can inter- I can interview all my former all the former guys I used to cover. But that's really cool. Now I'm I'm obviously I'm a Hawks fan number one, but now I'm a Clippers fan number two. Yeah, all roads lead back to Corey Clark. See everything you ain't lying. Corey. You ain't lying, Doctor. Oh, also shout out to Chris Kumaji. He he made the highlight. He sent somebody packing. Somebody came hard into the into the hole, and he said he said no. Yeah, I saw that, but I I, I guess I didn't see it in the highlight or not. Did he do the thumbs down? I don't actually. I should probably pull that up right now as as I talk about. It. I should have it prepared. 
but I was because that's to... his go-to. That's his Dikembe finger wave, Matumbo finger wave. Was the the Kumaje thumbs down? I'm so proud of myself. I know how to spell his name, but hopefully, whoever put it on Twitter knows how to spell his name, so that I can see it properly. Here we go. You can hear it. I hope. Maybe you can't hear it. Oh! <laughs> no, he stayed humble. The big fella said, "Nope." Not he stayed humble. He stayed humble. He humbly. didn't do the thumb. Didn't do. That's it. what I thought. I didn't think I. I remember. I didn't remember seeing the thumb go down. Well, the clip's only I guess eleven when it's your seconds. First long. summer league game. Yeah. You don't need to make a lot of enemies yet. Yeah. Yeah. It was only eleven seconds, so maybe later on the clip he did. But yeah, I think, you know, Chris knows to keep a keep a humble mind, keep a keep a level. But head. apparently he's got. That's a guaranteed contract too. Like he's getting paid. Yeah. Which is awesome for him, man. Hell that's yeah. uh It's a cool program to cover now. Gonna have five or six guys in the in the actual league, uh, in like guys like Beasley, Isaac. Uh, I think Bacon's gonna get some playing a lot of more playing time this year, and obviously Fiondu has a chance, and, and Terrence Mann. They're gonna be on a really good team. It's cool to have all these guys that you covered, um, get get real meaningful minutes in the NBA because it hadn't been a there wasn't a lot of that there in that that middle stretch of the of the decade. Yeah. And also, uh, just one last thing, not related to what we've been talking about for the last 15 minutes. Uh, Florida State did get a commitment on the 4th of July, a four-star athlete from, guess where, Corey? Homa, Louisiana, uh, Terrebonne High School, Ja'Kai Douglas, 5'9", 184-pound athlete, uh, number 10 prospect in the state of Louisiana. So that's that's always a good thing when you can go into Louisiana and uh, pluck somebody from Ed Orgeron's you know, steely grasp. So uh, three things you need to know about that commitment. Michael Langston breaks it down as he always does again over on warchant.com. Also uh, congrats to the, uh, the uh, women's world cup team. Yes. Did right you on. watch that? Uh, I did not. Oh, I did. Um, that second goal was just a thing. That girl's going to be like the, she's the next superstar. Apparently she's really young, but very good. Um, but yeah, man, that's just really cool. That's really cool. They dominated, um, and uh, yeah, zero zero at half, and they they came through and uh, and uh, made it. Ha- it'd be nice if the men were. I know it's completely different. I get it, and I actually had this conversation with a buddy of mine. Of like, why are women so much better than our men? And I, you know, I I think the men are at a supreme disadvantage in this country because we don't have like the we are we haven't had the feeder programs that obviously a Brazil or an Argentina or a Germany or France or England have necessarily. Um, and the women, they're not really battling that so much. And also, this is a great place for women's athletes, this country. You know, and, and somebody that covers Florida State and all the all the, the women from other countries that come here to participate in college athletics, that is one of the things that we have really gotten right in this country is giving women a chance to get uh, – scholarships to play college athletics. That's really cool. And it really helps. And it's, it's one of the reasons we're really good at, uh, at women's sports is because we do care and we do take it seriously. And I don't know, you know, I, I, I think it goes back before the Brandy Chastain Mia Hamm team from, I think that was 98 or 99. Correct. Um, I guess 99 would have been 99, 90, yeah. but yeah, man, I mean, it's, it's awesome that we have, we're, we're so good at some, we're, we're really good in international sport. Um, so yeah, congrats to them. Four time World Cup champs, buddy. All right. One of these days the men will I don't know. You think they'll ever win it in our lifetimes? No, I don't think and so. And I'm not a soccer fan. I, I shouldn't I'm not gonna even pretend to be one. Um uh, like a, one of, you know what I mean when I say soccer fan. Right. Anybody yeah. listening to this knows what I mean when I say soccer fan. I keep up a little bit and I keep up during the World Cup, but I'm not one of those quote unquote soccer fans. You don't have a so, scarf. You don't have a scarf and of exactly. Um, and I, and I don't, I use the right subject verb agreements when I'm talking about them. I don't say like America are great. America are struggling. I say America is struggling anyway. Um, but yeah, I, I don't know how we, you know, it feels like, I feel like there was a time, maybe five, four or five world cups ago where we, we came close to getting to the semifinals. Yeah. 2002 out in uh, is that Japan. What it was? Yeah. Japan, South Korea or the hosts. Yeah. There you go, and then uh, and then now we just it just it's we we didn't make the World Cup last time, and then we just lost to Mexico in the Gold Cup, and you know I know the the one kid um, I'm not going to try to pronounce his last name. That's how not great I am with soccer. Pulsic, I can spell it. Yeah, there you go. 
Um, he's pretty fun to watch, yeah. but man, it's just like you just wish we'd get better at it because I do think we're starting to invest more in it, and and a lot of people really do care in this country now. But what are you gonna do? That's for another show. Congrats to the women. It's not watch about the, the men. real football. It's about That's the women. what you're gonna do. Yeah, shout out. Corey underscore Clark. Give him clout on Twitter for shouting out women's athletics. He's Corey. And don't give me grief for not. Don't give me grief for not knowing more about soccer. Yes. Uh, go to warchant.com. We'll have the Renegade Express thread up. We'll tr- we'll do at least one more show this week. Maybe two. I think at some point we got to go. What happened to us just taking a week off? I'm thinking we'll do that after ACC kickoff when we fill a couple of those shows, and then you go to France since you'll be away. And um, right. We'll just, you know. No, I think I'm actually I'm going to Cleveland. Uh, we changed it at the last minute. It was going to be Paris. Oh, okay. But then I changed it, and I'm like, you know what? Uh-oh. Cleveland. It's July. I want to see what Cleveland, Ohio has to offer. So okay. we'll go to Paris another time. All right. Yeah, I'm thinking, yeah, late late July we'll we'll shut her down for a week because otherwise we'll we'll just get sucked into the vortex. That is, oh, hey, it's football season already. No days off. No oh, days yeah, exactly right. off. So yeah, that, that's what we should do. Is after that week or during that week, we 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 tell our listeners how much we love them. Mm-hmm. Um, we've given you so many hours of you know really free content, mm-hmm. uh, but we're gonna we're gonna take a week for ourselves. Yeah, and it'll be filled with Zaxby's. It'll be delicious. He's Cora Maslow. Thanks for listening. We'll catch up with you all later. The universe is a big place, so you should feel especially lucky you ended up on the same planet with Zaxby's. And right now, we're cooking up our special Cajun Spice Blackened Chicken for our Cajun Club Sandwich and Black and Blue Salad. It's an intergalactically delicious taste experience, and you don't have to travel light years to get it. The Cajun Club Sandwich and Black and Blue Salad, only at Zaxby's. 